and welcome to redlining at RPM Critical. I am Pastor Scott, and as my friend Tim over there, uh, Tim, say hi. Hey, it's Pastor Tim in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, I'm here in Long Island, New York, and uh, Tim and I both say happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we hope you enjoy your family and your time together and that you are thankful for the right things that we need to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. You got to be thankful for the right things. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is your Good News Network, which we bring you each week. And uh, we will be going off the rails again. I think each week we're going to go off the rails from now on. And uh, and we do have uh, a, a special <clears throat> segment tonight. Uh, as we try to uh, modify the show and uh, we listen to you guys and your comments out there and we uh, we take heed to what you say. Um, so we are going to modify some things. Um, don't forget to email us at redlining at rpmcritical.com and subscribe and share. Don't forget to click that subscription button and share it with your friends. And don't forget to comment and put likes up or, or downs, whatever you want. Uh, anyway, uh, our special show and topic for tonight is a why this news we're going to be talking about tonight and all the news lately that we're talking about matters and B why and I'm going to I'm going to coin a term here green thumb theology is such a massive sign from God that we're all missing. Mm -hmm. But before we get to all of that we both uh, want you to know what makes this new show different and that is that we also bring you the good news each week uh and we take it from the word of god and the good news for each week is good wins evil loses lies will be exposed the righteous will be exalted morality integrity win perversion and insanity loses truth will always beat deception and the good guys win if the good guys are following god our creator so be of good cheer get excited uh, because despite the bad news we have a salvation train and it's taken us out of this mess and above and beyond it. Um, anyway, with all that said, uh, to my co-host, Timothy, uh, with uh, with the news. And uh, this is for the week of November 24th, 2022. Um, and uh, Tim, what do you have to share with us? What news has caught your eye this, uh, this day? So we got, I'm going to read two stories because they're kind of okay. linked together. And one is... Uh, Joe Biden threatens the North Korea. Uh, the war games continue in the Philippine Sea. And so that's the headline of one. Um, and then to counter that, we've got North Korea warns of an all-out nuclear response to U.S. aggression. <laughs> so <laughs> not that it's that's funny, like but it's like yeah. they're, they're, just, they're playing just this back and forth. Yeah. Uh, war game. So North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has promised to use nuclear weapons to counter threats from the United States hours after test firing an intercontinental ballistic missile. So we're, we're seeing the, the war drums beating and, uh, and uh, everybody's beating their chest and somebody's going to eventually probably uh, do something that we, we don't want to happen but um it's i think it's inev inevitable um yeah. we're, we're just seeing that um so what okay. what do you think about all that oh, yeah. what do i think about well yeah. i i keep on hearing that scripture wars and rumors of wars i mean Amen. you can't deny that i mean there's never been such rumors of wars uh like there is now and i mean you know three four years ago we went not even thinking that we'd ever hear again back the way it was in the Cold War, where the possibility of a nuclear strike on the United States, we, we thought that was gone. Now it's, yeah. that's the evening news, man. This is real and news, it's, real deal. It's coming from all over, though. All I over, mean, we, Supposedly, uh, Russia has a has a sub somewhere off our coast yeah. that, that's missing, and uh, uh, we're, we're just hearing it from everyone. There's uh, the Iran uh, uh, possibility of a strike on Israel, and... Uh, Russia threatens uh, the European nations uh, and NATO nations. So um, it's just all over. And uh, it's amazing that we're witnessing all this in yeah. this time. And 
such such great succession it seems mm -hmm. like anybody who's a student of eschatology uh is i mean it's like you can't keep up with this stuff i mean there's never i mean for so long it was really quiet and, and you're looking for something and nothing's really happening mm -hmm. and now it's like everything is like a like a fire hydrant in the street just gushing with so many things we are you're trying to watch you can't keep up with it you and it's like we said it. before we we pick some news lines headlines and and uh, there's already something new uh, earthquakes i mean the earthquakes this last week have just been well, off, the, yeah. off the charts so uh, yeah it's it's amazing times we're living in you know yeah okay did you want to read an, uh, another story or do you want to go to our main topic for tonight what do you have anything else let's do the main topic okay we're okay gonna have so, fun with this. yeah no, we're gonna have fun with this one okay <laughs> Uh, so uh, tonight, it is clear, unless you're living in in a hole somewhere, that not just the United States, but the planet itself, the people of the planet, I say, are obsessed with saving the planet, okay? Environmentalism is off the charts. I mean, they're having the G2 summit, they're having, they're, we've got, to, it's, an, it's, you know, we don't care about borders or anything else or, you know, all these things, these horrific things, the breakdown of, of societal evolution and uh, uh, our young people taking their lives and uh, hooked on drugs and society. Mm -hmm. No, that's nothing. What the problem is, is it's a climate emergency. And what Tim and I want to talk about tonight is we're going to focus on this. Is that a biblical sign? Is that something that God spoke about? Mm -hmm. So before we go to the scriptures, I'm going to read two, uh, three stories. And then uh, Pastor Tim will also comment when we get to some interesting parts. Uh, and, uh, and, and ask the question again, you know, why is this happening? Is this something that, uh, you know, that we should, you know, we should be concerned about? So let's see here. Let me get my uh, news here. I'm putting the cart before the horse here. Okay. So I got three stories here. Number one, this is really off the, off the charts. I mean, this is really crazy. Activists smash tablets atop Mount Sinai in faith-based climate push. Jebel Musa Egypt, an initiative to mobilize, and notice these key words, mobilize faith leaders worldwide. They haven't contacted me. Have they contacted you to get mobilized? They haven't. They haven't. I don't know what leaders yeah. they're contacting. Uh, uh, mobilize faith leaders worldwide to push the governments to do more about climate change kicked off Sunday morning with an Israeli environmental activist smashing mock tablets of stone atop the Egyptian peak believed by many to be Mount Sinai to symbolize the world's failure to protect the planet. The Sinai Climate Partnership symbolically launched at the ceremony brings together the Interfaith Center for sustainable development watch those words interfaith uh, you hear them a lot it sounds wonderful wow interfaith mm. cool this is yeah. what god has won what them can't we all just get along yes you know can't we all just get along and you <laughs> yeah. and you you see people with those stickers we say it all the time you know what uh coexist, coexist. and yeah. all the different religions it doesn't work you can't just say coexist because everybody on that list says my way is the right way you better mm -hmm. get out yeah. Um, well, anyway, this uh, this symbolic ceremony here brings together the Elijah Interfaith Institute. That's a big one. Hmm. The Elijah Interfaith Institute. Now, you would sound that's pretty biblical. Must be a good thing. Uh, the Peace Department, the United Nations Faith for Earth Initiative. I didn't even know such a thing even existed. Hmm. Um, uh, Ambrowitz. Gigawatt Global and the Israeli Environmental Ag Advocacy Organization, Adam Tiva Vidian. Hmm. Um, and we're going to read uh, a list of the 10 principles, their 10 commandments. And look at this wording, climate repentance, okay, formulated by dozen of multi-faith leaders meeting in London. Again, they didn't call me and Tim to go there and discuss our point of view. I'd like to know who these multi-faith leaders are. And these were supposedly uh, read or revealed on Mount Sinai. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the place they think was Mount Sinai. Yeah, and so. uh, 
talk about spitting in God's face. Exactly. I mean, why go? His after? commandments, yeah, his yeah. commandments aren't good enough. Uh, let's make up our own. Yeah, and you know what? We can even, you know, we'll, you know, we can, you know, play the other side and say, okay, if this is in the Bible and this is God's thing, well, okay, fine. Then we should definitely be doing it. But where are you guys coming up with this? Because as we're going to see, this is a manipulation. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, the Bible says in Revelation to not add anyone who adds or takes away from the word of God. The very plagues of, uh, the, of what God has promised will come upon you. Uh, and, and they're changing the laws of God. So, Tim, as we go through these, what do you think upon these things? So we got the commandment number one. Uh, we are the stewards of this world now. And, and before I let Tim comment here, because uh, me and Tim, you know, we always meet for a pre-show rehearsal and we mm. go over these things. These are very strategically written. They're very tiptoeing on things that you could take it either way, depending on what side of the yeah. pendulum you're coming from. Very subtle, yeah, subtle manipulation. Or yeah, not even manipulation. It's uh, um, I don't know yeah. what's the word is. I've lost no, the word. No, I, I, I think it is manipulation. Or, uh, but anyway, number one, that we are the stewards of this world. So, what do you think, according to the Bible? What do you think about that? Well, I mean. In, in Genesis, uh, what is it, three or four, somewhere in there, God says that we are yeah. the stewards of the world. I mean, yeah. uh, Adam Adam was to name the animals, and, and uh, we were to take care of the garden, or he was to take care of the garden, and so, so on and so forth. So, yeah, we were, to, we were supposed to be stewards of the world. Um, what, it, what it gets into is, uh, in my opinion, this, is, this becomes earth worship. We worship Mother Earth or Mother, Mother Nature, and we see that in uh, some of the cults and um, uh, the uh, the worship of trees and and whatnot. So, um, yeah, we are stewards of this world. So, I mean, no, we give them a bell. For, we have a little bell. Yeah. Bing! You get a point but, for that. But at the same time, they <laughs> guilt you. They guilt yeah. you into thinking that. Um, if you're not taking care of the world, I mean, we're America and we, we do more here in America, I think, than most other countries. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. as far as recycling and, yeah. and uh, smog and, and yeah. all that stuff. I mean, we 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 pull our our weight here and uh, there's a lot of other countries that don't. And uh, I think China is probably one of the big contributors to uh, global pollution. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's another story. So, <laughs> okay, so we'll move on. To, move on, move on yeah. to the next one. Uh, and again, wow, this is these are just so tricky uh, and so clever. You know, mm -hmm. we give them uh, uh, an, uh, a C for clever. Creation manifests divinity, and mm -hmm. we can we can play that card and we can find some scriptures you know the heavens declare the glory of god mm -hmm. but what do you think they're trying to say here tim i think it's almost of a of a religious overtone that uh creation is divine and uh i mean the bible says in romans one uh that god gave them over to the left of their hearts to impurity that their bodies might be dishonored among the music uh dishonored among them for they exchanged the truth of god for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed yeah. forever amen yeah. uh, it turns uh it turns it into worshiping creatures just like the bible says just like in romans one um the creation i should say yeah, yeah. so uh so yeah and you know what uh we can we can spin that and say yeah creation manifests divinity but sometimes a lot of times when you talk to people from that you know side of the pendulum um i forgot the uh, the technical term for it but they believe that god is in everything god is mm -hmm. in the trees he's in the bugs um and you know and if that's so then god is creation and right. and and just keep in mind you know uh when Tim and I are talking here, it's it's not like, you know, that we want to just, you know, let's just pour pollution out and let's pollute the waters. No, we all drink the water. I want clean water. I want clean air. 
uh, I'm not opposed to those things. Okay. Uh, the Bible is not opposed to those things. God's their good thing. Uh, they're good things. Uh, but when it gets to this level, okay, we have to ask ourselves, is this what God is really concerned about? Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay, commandment number three, everything in life is interconnected. Um, you know, and they're walking on tight ropes here. Uh, what do you think about that, Tim? Everything well, in life is interconnected to a degree. To a degree. I mean, there's cause and effect. You know, you cut down a forest and we pollute, you know. Yeah. It takes away the ability to clean the air and, and uh, or there could be, yeah. as in California, where they, they don't do uh, uh, the, the def deforestation, they get uh, fire so i mean there's there's things and then mudslides on top of that after when it rains and and just all so everything could be connected in that sense but as far as uh you know we're we're not living it's not a living uh being uh the earth is not a living being yeah the, um that's, there's that's... things there's things that are connected and there's cause and effect but um so is everything you know, in life really interconnected? Yeah. Uh, and, and again, it's, it's all dependent on how you spin this. And again, these people are very brilliant because you can spin each one of these things that to really, because they could come back to us and they could pander to us and say, well, mm -hmm. you know what? And they could spin it and say, yeah, we, you know, we could spin. We're stewards of this world. Yep. We can spin that to mm -hmm. the Bible creation manifest. Yeah. Okay. Creation does, but that's not what they're trying to say. Everything in life is interconnected. The uh, commandment number four, do no harm. Now, I know what they're saying here. Do no harm to the earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. And I don't, you know, uh, think there's a problem. But also, you know, we are told in the Bible that the, the God has made these things not so, you know, uh, for us to live. Uh, they, you know, uh, they are there for us, the, you know, the fruit trees and the apple trees and all those things. Uh, but when they say do no harm to the environment, we can really flip this and we can say, well, how about do no harm to humanity? Aren't we part mm -hmm. of 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 this picture? Right. You know, if, you know, that side says we yeah. evolved, we're all together. We all came trees, apple trees, bugs and, and me and Tim. We all came from a primordial slime billions of years ago. So, OK. <laughs> I'll say do no harm, but how about to babies in the womb? Yeah. Does that does that include them? What do you think, Tim? Yeah, I well no, it doesn't include them. And uh it doesn't include include uh the human race because they have a, a an agenda for depopulation. And that all goes along with the whole thing. They they want to get rid of a lot of us on this planet, and then only the elitists will have their you know, those that are uh, pushing for all this are going to have the money and the the nice house and the rest, you know, that, that survive whatever plagues that they put upon the world and, and uh, or possibly, um, you know, genocide, you know, that, that could be a possibility. They, they want to see the world with a population of about uh, five, was it 500,000 or? Yeah, I think that's. Well, you know what? I mean, uh, I think to some degree, well, I mean, down at the heart of this is that humans are the problem and the world would be better off without us and just yeah. let the planet, you know, take over because, the, you know, apparently the planet is superior to those who live on it. And uh, that's it's just interesting. But when we get to the end of this, we're going to read because this is all, you know what we, you know, you can tell where Tim and I come from that, you know, where we lean uh, and we don't want to offer disrespect uh, that we're mocking. It might come off that way. And, and I do apologize, but, but we're going to show you, I mean, if these are supposed to be taken from faith, people of faith and spiritual, we're going to read the word of God. And he mm -hmm. is explicit about this and to watch out that this exact thing is going to be happening. So we got uh, commandment number five. Well, this is such an interesting thing. Look after tomorrow. Okay. Hmm. Look after tomorrow. What do you think they mean by that? I mean, is that something that even a human can do? Look after tomorrow. They want to, well, they want us to 
leave a nice world for the next generation, and that sounds great. I don't believe the way things are going that there will be another generation. I mean, there we are living in the last days where the Bible says we're going to come into a period of, of tri great tribulation. Um, and there, there will, I, I believe that we are the last generation, as uh, I, I think J, J.D. Farag said I believe, at one point. I believe that too. Yeah. I do. And, uh, and, uh, with it's it's almost like misplaced priorities. One side is trying to save humanity, the other side is trying to save the planet. Okay, yeah. uh, what does God say? Okay, um, rise above next one, rise above ego for our world. I'll even know what that means. Rise above ego for our world. What do you yeah. think that means? Maybe you're smarter than me. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Put put your ego aside for the sake of, of okay. the planet, you know, I guess. See, I'm, you know. I'm a little slow, slow. I didn't get that. Snow. You know, I said snow so, in New York. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wish it would snow here. Um, you know, it's like, uh, put your ego aside. So, um, live, uh, you know, you don't need the nice house with the the big cars and, you know, the gas guzzling cars that cause pollution, you know, to yeah. inflate your ego and, you know, that kind of a thing. You know, everybody should live in a tiny house or, you know, a cracker the, box somewhere. The, <laughs> the same house, you know. You know the same the, house. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's their yeah. plan is to have yeah. us living in the same house and sharing, uh, going in rotation. Um so, but yeah, I think that's what I think that's what the ego part means. Yeah, ego parts is uh, this is an interesting one. I mean, the couple. I mean, these are just mind blowing. They really are. Okay, let, let me see. Uh, next commandment, a climate commandment: change your inner climate. Change your inner climate. Okay, uh, it's it's interesting how these can sound so like. Okay, kind mm -hmm. of. Uh, but I, I know one thing. I don't have a climate inside me uh, that I know of. Uh, I know I got a lot of sin inside me. And, mm. uh, and if I could change that, I would. I can't. That's why God came along to do it for me and offers to change that inner climate. But uh, change our inner climate. What do you think they mean by that, Tim? Uh, the first thing that came to my mind was uh, like within our own homes, like setting i i know that that's a big thing with with uh setting the temperature at a certain level you know so that it doesn't go on your air conditioner doesn't go on or uh uses energy which causes pollution and that kind of a thing um that's a possibility i know in our house we have a uh a, what are these things called um the nest thermostat it's a little round yeah. digital thing with what that listens yeah. <laughs> listens if you're home and it, it will shut everything off if you're if it doesn't hear you and you know so weird stuff like that and and we get reports. And, and there's nothing wrong with that that's that's fine yeah. and saving resources but you know to you know to what end um for me it it's it's too much overreach you know and, and uh i i don't like having somebody tell me where i should set my temperature well, because, because that's, I, yeah, that's I, where that's going to come to. They're going to yeah. be able to link in and they'll tell you this is the temperature you need to be at, yeah. your air conditioning and your heat. Yeah. Whether it's my wife or, or yeah. I arguing over what the, where we're going to set the fan. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it's yeah. like, you know, they don't they they want me to keep it at what, 72 degrees yeah. or, or whatever. And I like it at 68. So, yeah. you know, that kind of a thing. So interesting things. Uh, Okay, now they're really using some God terminology here. And and again, people, keep note, uh, we're not saying that uh, these things are bad or good. Uh, you know, they can be bad or good. But what we're really saying is, and what the point is, this obsession with this stuff, is it significant according to God's word? What is mm -hmm. God's word? Because if this is an interfaith coalition uh, well, then I'd like to say, I'd like to see that the Bible is out and, and mm -hmm. they're looking through, let's see what God says about these things. Right. Because, you know, this show and where we're coming from, we're, we're, follow, we're, we're looking for truth. 
what the truth is, if you always say, if I, I always say, if God says that everybody needs to wear one of those round beanies with a propeller on top, then on, on Tuesdays, then I'll do it. You know, show me where a scripture says, and I'll, I'll, I'll get the beanie. Tim, I think you look good with a beanie with a propeller on top. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Yeah. <laughs> so our, our next one is repent and return. What do you think about that? Repent and return. Repent of what? Our return sins against what? nature, I guess. And return to what? Yeah. I mean, the return 1700s to... or, yeah. you know, pre-industrial revolution. I mean, I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, it, it would be nice to live in the woods, but, you know, on maybe for a week when you're camping. Uh, but, uh, you know, if we and, you know, really, let's you know, we throw that out there. OK, from a humanistic point of view, a human. Okay, we get rid of like you know cars. We get rid of trains. We get rid of planes. We get rid of all fossil fuels. We get rid of all those things. Well, with that, it, technology is going to go, and we're we're going to. Is that what the world wants to go back to? You know, you know, a thousand BC. Do you want to live like that? Uh, and do you feel that God is is that's what you know? And that's the question. If this is a religious movement. Uh, then is that what God wants? And where do they where do they get these commandments from? Hmm. Okay, uh, maybe the prince and power of the air. Maybe I yeah. Know. Ultimately, uh, yes. What do you think, Ten uh, Tim? Repent and return. Uh, oh, did I ask you that already? Did I ask you that already? Yeah, you, yeah, okay. we did. But okay, I, I don't know. Still doesn't. Yeah, doesn't register. It minutes. doesn't register. Yeah. Uh, uh, every okay, uh, well, up to number nine, the ninth commandment. Every action matters. Yeah, well, I think that's true, right? Uh, but always remember, what's you know, what's the core? What's getting spun here, Tim? What do you think mm -hmm. when when they say every action matters? Yeah, it does. God says that, but what do you think they're saying here? Yeah, I don't. You know, this one, another one, I don't get. It's like. You know, we, we do our part here in the house to recycle, for instance. Um, but they want us to wash our trash, <laughs> the recycled trash. I mean, and I don't do that. So it's like, I because I don't wash my trash and put it down the drain, which causes pollution. Um, you know, I, I'm not doing the action that, that they require of me by, by recycling. I think recycling is you know, a big farce anyways, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't really understand what this one, every action matters. Well, you know, I guess it does, you know, in some point the, yeah. every action towards God matters too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and if, and if this is a, a, if, if this is from God, as they say, then yeah, then, uh, uh then we should be concerned, but uh, how about every action like lust and stealing and lying, right. Uh, do those things matter too? Uh, yeah. Or is this one up on top? And again, people, we're not saying, you know, there are people on one side that can prove, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is great for society. Let's go back to horses and living on farms, stuff like that. That's okay. But that's not what we're talking about here. Even though we're giving our, our own personal opinions, what we're driving at is this obsession with this. Is it of God? And is it a sign that God spoke about thousands of years ago to look for when you see this, because that's that's where we want to go with this. So, uh, last one: use mind, use mind, comma open heart. Okay, use mind, open heart. Um, what do you think of that one? Use mind, think, and. Uh open your heart up to what they're saying i boy yeah some of these is maybe it's the article the way this was taken from the article but I, a lot of these just don't make sense in themselves um but use mind and open heart well you know what I, I think I you know doesn't do anything. It's it's really strange. I was it's, I was looking at that where you were pondering it and I was thinking, you know what, maybe this is a dig uh, because those on that side believe that people on our side that we're closed-minded, and if we really mm -hmm. cared 
about what's right and good and true, we would be obsessed with this also. I mean, it could be a thing. Yeah. We need to open our hearts, you know, uh, to the planet. And uh, and I think we are. Uh, we're, we're concerned about these things. We're not, it's not that we're not concerned. Uh, and to use our mind, is there something that somehow that side feels that they're more superior because they've seen something that we don't see. Uh, so I'm going to move on. I got, I tell you, uh, two more stories here and it's going to be a quick one. Uh, okay. number two, new worship songs for climate change and creation care, the Calvin Institute of Christian worship. And I'm not, I'm not going to read the article. So, uh, we're going to be singing that in church. Now, uh, we're going to be singing, you know, you know, praise mother earth from whom all blessings flow. Yeah. Uh, I, is, is that what we're supposed to be doing? And, and if yeah. we are, well, let's see it in scripture. Let's see it in, in scripture. What do you think? Do you remember the, the original movie, the planet of the apes? Yeah. Yeah. I remember and they, that. They, there was a scene where he goes in and there, there's like a, a choir singing in some cave if i remember and, and something in the song and the words i think it, maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong but it had something to do with um the climate or something along those lines <laughs> something outrageous but anyways that just popped yeah. in my head for some reason yeah um totally totally off topic um praising our creator well our creator who we know is uh is the lord um and what creator are they uh are they praising well um, let me just let me just read this article here churches complete the on uh, the unique online oh excuse me i'm i'm jumping ahead here to the next one i have one more okay okay no you keep on going there and then we'll get to my number three the ego church that's coming next uh so uh it's about singing in church about the planet and animals and the environment in our worship that's the question yeah if we're allowed to still sing because germs fly out without a mask um we who find our stories within god's big story know that the bible begins with god loving the cosmos into existence did he love the cosmos into i know it? that's that's, I, that's I, like I never a, heard that. that's a twist he love did not love the cosmos into existence he created with his with the word of his mouth yeah. he said it and it existed had nothing to do with loving the cosmos placing humanity in in the garden of eden as part of an abundant integrated creation um, he made humanity adam and eve he made adam in in his own image um we are the, made yeah. we are made um thoughtfully in, in god's image and um, and the only one of god's creation that is made in god's image the animals absolutely are, the trees absolutely are. so yeah there's there's uh i won't get into the whole thing but there's a lot of twists and you know for people that don't know uh, the word of god it all sounds oh wow this sounds great yeah and sounds, satan comes in great. you know did god really say that you you will die you know yeah. you know yeah. his his whole he, satan knows the word yeah he knows the word of god better than we do um and he's able to unless you have the wisdom um that god gives us um if we ask for it satan can come in and twist things to where it sounds real nice and uh, it sounds well, almost this, godly it so, yeah. sounds almost of god that what, you know, and there might be, you know, maybe you're out there and you're watching us and going, so what's wrong with any of this? Why are you guys opposed to this? There you go, you Christians, uh, you know, and we're not opposed to this per se, but we're concerned that if this a, is a religious movement, because they're right. making it religious, they're, they're connecting <clears throat> two things together and assuming that environmentalism and serving the creator god are it'll, one and same it'll be part of uh well this new world order that's coming um and the one world religion uh i i think that um earth worship will be part of the uh the one world religion i mean 
if the Pope's involved with this and he's trying to get uh, the the interfaith community together, yeah. and we've already seen they've they've made houses of worship um, where interfaith uh, houses of worship um, around the world. I think there's one in uh, um, it's either in Iraq near Babylon or somewhere out in in the Middle East. Um, and I believe there's another one being built also, another one of these big temples um, where they're trying to get everybody has a place. You know, the big three religions yeah. will have their place to come together and worship God um, or the creator, creation, I should say, which probably will be uh, Mother Earth will be part of it. Um, and what all this ends up doing is is getting people ready for uh, this one world government and religion that's talked about in the Bible. Um, there will be a, a, a uh, you know, who we call the Antichrist. The, the one world is ringing. Is it mine? <laughs> oh, it is mine. Yep, okay. I got to. <laughs> okay. uh, so, uh, you know, we actually have, there's a, a, a church nearby here in Stony Brook. What's the name of that thing that uh, humanist, uh, you know the name of that place that uh, uh, humanist the uh, evolute no the uh, universalistic uh, universal something like that. It's a big fancy technical term, but mm -hmm. everybody comes in and you want to worship a a twig or a glass of water. Uh, that's where you go, and you know, and they mm -hmm. have people going there, and they you know they're under a you know under the guys they probably have a five oh five oh one c three and sure uh a religious organization um uh but anyway uh my next story is the eco church uh churches complete and now this this is what they're gonna want be looking for and you can say if you're going to church do, do you pass these rules churches complete the unique online eco survey survey about how they are caring for God's earth in different areas of their life and work. The answers uh, a church provide will collect points towards an eco church award. Mm -hmm. uh, the more your church does, the more points you get. Hot off the presses. Yeah, yes. that sounds okay. Okay. Yes. And uh, thank you, crew. They're right on the, on, on the case. It's called the, uh, that's church nearby Unitarian Universalist mm. Fellowship. Uh, that's a, big, uh, a pretty fancy term, Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Right. And uh, no one know, goes to hell. There's no hell. Uh, everybody gets into heaven. Um, and and whatever you believe is good is as long as you believe it with your own heart mm -hmm. and you're and, and that's a lot of you hear that a lot is that is you know as long as it makes you feel good and, and that's what you believe it doesn't matter what truth is and that's what you know people this show that we're doing here this new show yeah we're definitely not like a normal news show because we have uh we are accountable to something you know our fact checker so to call, uh, mm -hmm. so to speak, is God the creator, his word. And we're not going to sell anything or do anything unless it's fact-checked with the word of God. So, I mean, I mean, would, let me see, would my church here pay, uh, get any eco awards? So let me see, what do we do for the environment? I don't know. We uh, we recycle bottles of water, I guess. There and, you uh, go. So we we do that. <laughs> we uh, switched over to natural gas instead of uh, oil heat. Um, I guess we're not going to get too many points, but it's it's not like we're out there spitting on the grass. You know, we have we yeah. love our flowers. We have a beautiful garden. We love creation. Uh, but I don't know if I'm going to get any eco points for that. So mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, Tim, I want to ask you this, okay? Um, why the obsession with the environment and the planet? Why those? Why do those in Christ, like you and I, not feel? And this is why the world is very perplexed by us. Why do they not feel the same way of those who know not Christ? Uh, so we are who are in Christ. Uh, we don't seem to have this obsession with saving the planet and and saving you know the seals and the fish and the trees and the grass uh not not that we want them destroyed but it's not our focal point why is that as a believer 
As a believer, you... our, our hope is in the Lord and our future is with the Lord and it won't be in this world. They're trying to save this world and live forever and, and do it by their own power. Um, we will uh, live forever with the Lord. Um, we will be renewed in, you know, our, our new bodies. So, you know, it's, why, why do they do it? They, they don't know God. Yeah. They, that ultimately they don't know the creator. And, and you have to have a God, whether the people understand it a lot, they worshiping something, something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and they, they choose to, to worship the creation, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I see, you know, uh, you know, us as believers, it's really temporal versus the eternal, right? We always look exactly. at things from an eternal perspective. They look at things from a temporal perspective. Uh, we focus on the creator. They focus on the creation. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Yep. Yeah. And we yeah. are worshiping something. We, we are worshiping something, but not the same thing. Who are you going to worship? Choose this day whom you'll serve, yeah. God, the Father, our Creator, or the creation. Yeah. yeah, and and you know what? And that word "serve" and everything is a good point because uh, it's you know it's not like we're saying that these you know taking care of the planet and the air are bad things. We're not, but when it gets to be the point of worshiping, okay, when mm -hmm. the planet, the grass, all these things become something that we must save we must worship then they become our our god and the point that i want to you know wind down with tonight is is this this trek that we're going off because it's it's gaining momentum like never before i mean it's off the charts people are crying they're screaming uh we have these advocates these uh uh what's that word i'm looking for not advocates these uh uh uh, lobbyists and these people who are, you know, having these big speeches and getting people all worked up, crying, screaming. You know, uh, I have a video clip that I showed at church once of people uh, in the woods crying and hugging. I mean, they, they weren't fooling around. They were crying to mm. the trees and the rocks and saying, we're so sorry what we've done to you. And they were crying and all. And I they were very sincere, yeah. very sincere. And they were just, and it was this group that went out and just decided we need to mourn for what we're doing. And it brings me to, and you alluded to it, well, you didn't allude to it, you actually read it. This is our scriptures, but there's a couple of scriptures here. Romans 1.20, uh, for the invisible things of him, God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen. And what's that? You know what? I mean, Adams, we never saw Adams before, but uh, now we can. Mm -hmm. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The mm -hmm. very environment that you're worshiping was placed there and designed there to point you not to worship the creation, but to the one who made it, the creator. Makes me think Absolutely. about the Jews, you know, uh, the nation of Israel, God's chosen people. He loves the Jews. We love the Jews. But what happened? Where did they go off track? They thought that, you know, uh, that, you know, God was just for them and they didn't want to share. And, uh, but they have no excuse either. Uh, it was a selfish thing. And then uh, verse 21 of Romans 1, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Thanksgiving is, is coming. And that's a good thing. What are you mm. going to be, you know, I always ask people, when you're having Thanksgiving, if you don't believe in God, who are you thanking? Uh, yeah. Yourself. Uh, I did great this year. I am so great. Um, they were uh, not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, selfish, me only, and their foolish hearts were darkened. And boy, I, I love this. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Uh, uh, Kent Hovind, a creation scientist guy, uh, on that scripture once said, uh, uh, Romans one twenty two in uh, the Kent Hovind uh, uh, dictionary means stupid on purpose. 
They were yeah. stupid on purpose. Yeah. And verse 23, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God, God the creator who deserves the glory mm -hmm. into, and this is the scripture that you read, into an image made like unto corruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and the creeping things. In verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the creature, the creation, more than the creator who was blessed forever. God is telling us, when you see this happening, you know we're going off the charge. God says there's yeah. going to be a day, and there's never been a day like this, where the world worships more what God made than the God who made yeah. those things. You got to want to comment? Yeah, and... It, before the the 25 is uh, 24 where it says therefore god gave them over because of these things he gave them over um you want to you know commit sin or you want to continue on in in your way of life or whatever all right god will pull his hands off you and um, give you over to that that mindset and that will be their own downfall yeah. They have, you know, they get what they want. And God is basically saying in that scripture, you guys want to worship the trees and all this stuff and do whatever yeah. you want to worship your bodies or whatever, do anything that's convenient for you. Okay. Well, that's going to be your God and that God can't save you. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that God can't deliver you. That God can't heal you. That God can't do anything. That and, God can't see. He can't hear. Yeah. He doesn't feel. He can't speak. He just, it's an object. It's dead. It's just like the, the the people of Israel worshiping idols that did not speak or hear. Or yeah, or, God says that. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're praying to a, a an idol that has no ears, has no eyes. He can't do anything. You know, the planet isn't moaning. You know, we hear Mother Earth all the time, and, the, and mm -hmm. all these environmental things going on is because the Earth is mad at us. You know, no, God's mad at us. Okay, and the Bible says that the earth moans because of the weight of sin. Creation is is moaning not because was we're not taking care of the planet, but because when we're forgetting the Maker of the planet. Yeah. Uh, next uh, scripture, uh, Psalm nineteen <laughs> one to the uh, well, just going to skip here. The heavens declare what? Okay, the glory, the glory. of God. And the firmament, everything else shows what his handiwork. Okay, day unto day unto day, utter a speech. The creation, yeah, God talks a lot about creation, not to be worshipped, but to point us to the Creator. Day unto day, utter a speech, and night unto night shows knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Yeah, and that's the question: What is creation crying out? Worship us or worship God? What do you mm -hmm. think, Tim? Worship God, the birds of the air. What do, what do you think they're nature singing. itself when you when they're <laughs> singing? I mean, the animals seem to know who God is better than, than uh, mankind. Absolutely, does. they do. Oh. I really believe that. Uh, they know. They know. And uh, you know, I believe that those in Christ. You know what? We have a peace. And people would say, you know, why aren't you guys concerned? And you know, get rid of you know your gas guzzlers and buy a horse. Or well, horses are going to have flatulence that are going to yeah. pollute the air, so we can't do that. Uh, <laughs> forgive me, that was a cheap shot there. Uh, <laughs> why do? <laughs> why are we not? It's not that I'm not concerned, but I'm not as concerned as you know, uh, the people of the world seem to be that this is an emergency. I'm not because my peace is not based upon that which I stand on, but that which gave me life. And Tim, what does the Bible say ultimately is going to happen to the earth? What's the earth, the planet's future? The earth will be destroyed. It will be burned up. Burned up. Yep. We're, so we're living for something. We're trying to save something that's going to be ultimately destroyed uh, because God didn't make the earth and the planets and all this stuff uh, to be worshipped. He made them specifically for us. Isn't it interesting that we live on a planet where the air and you know the oxygen, nitrogen level is just where it needs to be, the food, the water. It's all based to keep us alive. Yeah. It's meant for God's prize achievement is not 
the animals, and though I love animals, love dogs, love cats, I love animals, love them, love them, love them. I'm an animal mm. lover, but God made them for us. You know, my little kitty cat, you know, he gives me a lot of comfort. And I, and I, I will have three of them. I thank the Lord, and I do. God, thank you for making these animals. Why are they so snuggly and cute? Because they comfort me. They really do. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we need to remember that every, you know, mankind is God's main focus here and uh we have peace because i'm not worried about the planet dying i really am not i'm more concerned about souls who are going to hell uh that's that's the that's the big concern you know you know they're concerned about the planet god's concerned about those who live on it and he's talking about humans. And what does mm -hmm. evolution do? Uh, Tim, and, and uh, you know, you grew up with this like I did. What what were we taught in school of, in, in, with evolution that, you know, a frog and a human, uh, and when it, when it refers to equality, is anyone better than the other? No. I mean, oh. as far as evolution, yeah. they, they're the same, one and the same, I guess. I mean, we evolved from frogs or the cells that we both evolved from the same thing apparently from the goo to yeah. the zoo to you or whatever yeah. <laughs> the new zoo we view yeah. for you yeah. uh, old kids out there and uh it's uh it's a sad thing but the point of this show as we wind this down is uh take care of the planet that's fine uh clean air i'm all for clean air you know god is for clean air yeah, uh, you know, I don't want to see baby, you know, I don't want to see puppies hurt or anything. And but it's interesting, you know, you think about like a bald eagle, majestic, glorious. God mm -hmm. speaks about it, uh, you look in the book of Job, how God speaks about creation. And, uh, you know, the, to Job, did you give the eagles and the birds the able to fly and to soar and everything? Uh, but if if you were to take the eggs of an eagle and crush them and kill them, you would be in big trouble. And you would go yeah. to jail, but we can take a human baby and get rid of them, throw them in the garbage, yeah. and no one seems to care. And I that always baffles me. If if I was to take a pregnant dog and give it an abortion, that that would be an interesting thing. Hmm. What would the world do? And I and I took all the puppies and I threw them in the trash. Yeah. Uh, what would the world say? They but crazy. crazy. They would they would probably hang me up uh, by my toenails out on town square and I would be, you know, the poster boy for, you know, evil for the whole planet. Yeah. But why when uh, what's the only the only being that God created that we're allowed to kill and it's a good thing and it's humans. It's made humans. in his made in his image made in his image it's almost like there's someone behind the scenes mm -hmm. trying to orchestrate this and pull us away from god's original plan worship him yeah. and you know what remove and distract and that's what satan does uh he doesn't care what you worship just don't worship god yeah yeah Tim, he's, why a, he's yeah. a liar and a murderer he wants to see whether you're whether you're a Christian or you're not, he hates mankind so much because we are made in God's image. He wants us dead. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, so give us a, a a word to close out with, Tim. As people, uh, you know, we think about Thanksgiving, we think about these things, and what's the walk away uh, about these Ten Commandments of of environmentalism and. Uh, what do we have to be careful of and and why this is just so important? It's not just some random thing that's popping up. No, God said this was going to happen. So give us some closing thoughts, Tim. Yeah, well, um, boy, it's I, I would say that that um, our our direction and our thought should be towards the Lord. I mean, if you don't know the Lord, um, the world could be a scary place where things are ramping up here. Um, what what the Bible says about us living in the last days, um, the Bible talks about things that are going to take place, and this is this is one of the 
the main themes of the last days will be uh, a one world religion and, and uh, deception. Uh, people will be deceived into believing uh, a false narrative. Um, and so like we do every week, uh, we want to give people the opportunity to know the Lord and, and um, say the Holy Spirit's tugging on your heart and you feel things are, uh, something's up and something needs to be fixed and something inside of me needs to be fixed and I need a Savior. I need to be saved from my sin. Uh, the wages of sin is death, the Bible says. Um the Bible also says um, that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, and he rose again on the third day. Um, he, he died for the whole world. He loved the whole world so much that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, John 3, 16. And um, Romans uh, 10, 13, uh, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Um all you got to do is believe in, in Jesus as your Savior. Um, you can say a simple prayer and ask him into your life or believe that he died and rose from the dead for your to save you from your sins because without that, you can't do anything on your own to get into heaven. This life is but a vapor. I've lost uh, two family members and, and uh, 12 other friends over the last two years. Um, people I, I didn't think would, would pass so quickly and, uh, people that, that are in my age group that have died and they probably weren't expecting to pass. Um, they probably thought they were going to live, you know, another 20 years or so. Um, but there is a, a day of reckoning, um, the Bible says, and we will all stand before God at, at one point. And, uh, so we can't do anything on our own to save ourselves, uh, you're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell when you die. And uh, if you want to go to heaven, the only way you can do that is through the gift, the free gift of Jesus Christ, where he gave uh, or paid for our sins uh, w with his life uh, on the cross uh, by his blood. Um, uh, so believe in, in Jesus. Um, come to the Lord do it today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation, and, and that's uh, that's a free gift uh, to all, all people who call upon the name of the Lord. Um, you can just say a simple prayer. Dear Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner. Um, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Uh, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to live my life for you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you pray something like that, or something along those lines. It doesn't have to be the exact prayer, but the um, Bible says all you got to do is believe, and you will be saved. You are a new creation in Christ, and he will come into your life and change you from the inside out. Yeah, and, and you will be able to see. You know, it's like, why do we see this? Because God, you know, takes the blinders off. He yeah. really does. And, you know, it's like... Uh, what changed in me when I came to Christ, you know, uh, now when I look at a beautiful scenic mountain overlook or a beautiful sunset or at the beach, I love going into nature. I love it. I love that. But I don't see, wow, look how amazing nature is. I see, look how amazing God is. That's mm -hmm. what I see. I see God in the creation. It screams his name. Uh, yeah. And that's what it's there for. And, you know, and, and to tell god you know no we're gonna we're gonna take your signature off of that it's like taking you know famous artworks like a rembrandt or whatever and telling the artist you can't put your signature on that picture mm -hmm. we want to worship the picture we don't care about who made it we like yeah. the picture and in a way that's what we're doing god you're not allowed to sign your autograph on humanity and the cosmos yeah. but god says but i made it I get no credit for everything. Why is it that what I made has been elevated above me, the one who made it? And that's what we're trying to explain to you. And by the way, as Jim was talking about Jesus Christ on the cross, by the way, Jesus is that creator. He Amen. made everything, John, in the Gospel of John. In the beginning was Jesus. Everything, not one thing that was made was not made without Jesus. He is, in case you don't know it, it sounds strange. 
he is the creator he is god yes. he is the great i am uh the beginning Amen. and the end the alpha and the omega he is when moses asked god who are you right it's mm -hmm. a cool thing it's like a movie you know and god says i am <laughs> it's I like am. wow <laughs> isn't that awesome i exist i am okay? yes. i am the great i am jesus is the i am and uh we pray that you know him and uh and then enjoy the creation enjoy it go out you know look at the flowers they're beautiful i love them i love springtime and they're glorious but they're mm. not more glorious than the maker of them I mean, amen he he deserves our praise yes uh so uh we're gonna uh, sign off tonight uh we wish you a happy thanksgiving uh, enjoy your family and remember what you're thankful for. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it is only, it is only because of God that we even live and breathe, uh, that we're even born. Uh, life is precious and the life giver is even more precious. Mm -hmm. So, um, let us know what you think, you know, uh, I'm sure this really hit a hot, you know, is a hot topic and uh, I'm sure there's millions of people who would like to string us up and, and uh <laughs> for what we said tonight and you guys are crazy you're the problem you don't get it uh tell us why um you know we're open we we want to hear you know uh you know is it wrong to worship that which has made something or that which has been made by that uh you seem to worship what's been made we worship what is the one who made that and and i know the comeback will be well we don't believe that there's a creator and uh and, and that leaves you with just the creation and that's another topic for another day yeah yeah the heavens Maybe declare the glory of god so okay awesome okay it was a good good discussion good a good discussion uh, tonight tim feel feel well tim is a little under the weather if, if he looks a little out of it tonight uh give him some kudos <laughs> and prayers he's not feeling well but he was he, he wanted to do the show tonight he goes i'm not i'm not really feeling well I uh, just came back from the doctor and everything. Uh, so that that's why he looks a little tired. Uh, you still look cool. You still look great. But you, you need to get some rest, Tim. And we appreciate you uh, sticking and saying, I'm I'm still going to be here, even not feeling well, because it's awesome. that important. The show must go on. The show <laughs> must go on. So, yeah. uh, Tim, until next week, uh, our friends out there, until next week, God bless you. And we'll catch you on the other side. Thanks, Scott. God bless everybody.